foremost, a free and accepted Mason. Seen here laying the cornerstone of the U.S. Capitol building, Washington wears the jewel and apron of a master Mason, the third degree in the Blue Lodge of contemporary York Rite Freemasonry. Here we see the preserved cloth of George Washington's own actual Freemasonic apron, which he would have used to perform ceremonially in Freemasonic rituals. In this modern replica, we see the same Eye of Providence above the alphabet of other Masonic emblems, including Euclid's 47th, the square and compass, the black and white tiled floor, the twin pillars, the coffin and sprig of acacia, as were all seen originally on the Freemason apron of America's first president, General George Washington. But what does it mean for George Washington to have been a Freemason? Here we see him holding his hand inside his jacket while on the battlefield of the American Revolutionary War. Here we see a contemporary painting of Gilbert de Montier, Marquis de Lafayette, a commander general in the Continental Army who served during the Revolutionary War under General George Washington. Notice he is also holding his hand inside his vest beneath his coat. Lafayette was a French Freemason who also served as commander-in-chief of the French National Guard and in that position attempted to quell the growing French Revolution by ordering his troops to fire on unarmed protesters. Contemporary to Lafayette's service during the French Revolution, we find this painting of a young Napoleon Bonaparte who had already acquired the habit of keeping one hand inside his jacket. Here seen later, painted during his time as Emperor of France, we see Napoleon maintain this peculiar habit of posture in all his portraiture poses and held his hand inside his jacket as a general rule of habit. Interestingly enough, we see here in this photographic portrait of John Wilkes Booth, the assassin of U.S. President Abraham Lincoln following the American Civil War, the same pose as in the others of George Washington, Lafayette, and Napoleon, with his hand tucked up inside his jacket. This pose, with the hand tucked into the front coat pocket, arm held at a right angle crook at the elbow, is a symbolic gesture used to convey a certain meaning during the ritual ceremonies performed by York Rite Blue Lodge Free and Accepted Masons. So, again, what does it mean for George Washington? the Revolutionary War General and First President of the United States of America, to have been a Freemason? It means that he, like the other founding fathers of the American nation, who were also Freemasons, would be venerated by being carved and portrayed in stone, and his life would be commemorated by a massive megalithic monument. The statue of George Washington housed in his Masonic monument depicts him seated on a throne, covered by a toga, bare-chested, holding forth the handle of a sheathed sword in his left hand, and pointing up to the sky with his right forefinger. The pose of Washington's statue is meant to imitate a statue of Zeus, found during the Greek Golden Age in his temple on the Acropolis, and considered to be one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Its size was unrivaled besides the giant of Gibraltar. This Roman duplicate shows, on a much smaller scale, roughly what the statue's pose was, holding forth a lightning bolt in his right hand and pointing to himself with his left forefinger. The statue of George Washington clearly has the left hand offering the sword and the right hand pointing up toward heaven. However, as we may see on this ancient Greek coin, this posture may indeed have been the same as the original statue of Zeus, shown here bald and seated with a staff in his left hand and a bird above his right. 
The symbolism of depicting General Washington, who became the first president of the Democratic Republic of America, in the same posture as the ancient statue of Zeus, king over the pantheon of other gods, draws more than an allusion to the divine authority of the office in the form of Washington's offering the methods of war and peace to the onlooker. It also symbolizes the place of this office in the constellation of other roles played by the Founding Fathers commemorated in stone as well. The painting in the oculus of the dome above the statue of George Washington in the pose of the Greek god Zeus in his Masonic monument shows Washington seated among a circle of angels in rationalist-era ultra-realism style. In this painting that rivals the concept of the Sistine Chapel ceiling frescoes by Michelangelo, we see Washington conversing with a round table of angelic hosts from below looking up, such that he appears to be floating on a ring of cloud above the onlooker at a round table meeting of angels. Most of the founding fathers and many of the earliest presidents following George Washington were Freemasons. The Boston Tea Party had been organized by Freemasons from the Green Dragon Pub, which served also as a York Rite Lodge. Most of the signers of both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States were Freemasons. For these reasons, we will examine only a few of these famous men who have had their contributions to American history preserved in stone monuments in Washington, D.C., the federal capital of the USA. The quote that goes, I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man, is attributed to the great deist philosopher of the American Revolutionary Era, framer of the Constitution and author of the Bill of Rights, and Freemason, Thomas Jefferson. As we can see here, the Jefferson Memorial Building in Washington, D.C. sits with its front face of pillars and angled roof alike a Spartan interpretation of the Athenian Acropolis architecture facing the shore of the Potomac River. Inside the rotunda beneath the exact oculus of the enormous domed roof of the Jefferson Memorial is a huge statue of Thomas Jefferson holding a rolled-up copy of a scroll meant to symbolize the U.S. Constitution. This statue is several times life-size scale and faces east to symbolize Jefferson's Masonic role as a light-bringer. The enormous rotunda is surrounded by four walls containing etched sayings of Jefferson's, and above it is the oculus of the domed ceiling. Around the rim of the oculus's dome ceiling is written Jefferson's most famous saying, I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. That typifies his transcendentalist deism and flair for liberal democratic thinking. Other quotes by Jefferson adorn the walls of his memorial such as this one dealing with the modernization and reinterpretation of constitutional laws, this one expressing his feelings on slavery and education, and this one stating unequivocally his passion for the right of freedom of expression. Next in our tour of the Founding Fathers' Masonic Memorials in Washington, D.C., is this building, designed after the ancient temple of Zeus itself, called the Lincoln Memorial, built to honor the 16th U.S. President, Abraham Lincoln. As the Jefferson Memorial, the Lincoln Memorial also houses an enormous statue of its subject. However, while Jefferson's statue is metal and standing upright, Lincoln is carved from marble and sitting down. Above Lincoln is inscribed a dedication to him for saving the Union, referring to his role as President of the Northern Union States during the American Civil War against the Southern Rebel Confederacy States. 
Like the Jefferson Memorial positioned on the shore of the Potomac River, the Lincoln Memorial is also positioned above water in the form of the long, narrow, man-made pond called the Reflecting Pool on the Great Mall of Washington, D.C. Because of this, as Lincoln's enormous statue faces west, he is always looking in the direction of the Reflecting Pool and across it from the Lincoln Memorial at the enormous stele of the Washington Monument. The stele of the Washington Monument is directly west from the Lincoln Memorial at the opposite end of the long reflecting pool and at an angle further to the west from the Washington Monument stele is the Capitol building housing the Congress of the US government. The Washington Monument is like the separate Washington Masonic Monument, an enormous stele designed to resemble the so-called Cleopatra's Needle stele designs of ancient Egypt. The difference between the Washington Monument stele and the stele of ancient Egypt is that the Washington Monument is hollow and contains a staircase and elevator that ascend to the top. Here is a view from the top of the Washington Monument of the Lincoln Memorial at the opposite end of the reflecting pool. The orientation of the Lincoln Memorial to the Washington Monument forms a line along the long, narrow reflecting pool between them. At an angle from this line beyond the Washington Monument in a western direction is the Capitol Building which serves as the location for the dual Senate and House of Representatives. The Washington Monument is shaped like an Egyptian stele, which were often used to measure changes in duration over the seasons of the length of the day by measuring the length of shadows cast by the stele at various points throughout the day. The role of the Washington Monument stele is similar, with the reflecting pool acting like an enormous mirror by which to place a stationary landmark for measuring the steely shadow. The last Masonic founding father of the U.S. Democratic Republic, we will cover here briefly, does not have a memorial or monument built to him in Washington, D.C., however is often unrecognized for the contribution he was in the room during the designing of that being the U.S. Great Seal itself, both front and back. It is possible the Trenchard sketch for the eye atop the pyramid symbol was transmitted by Benjamin Franklin from the European Freemason lodges where the Illuminati had infiltrated to suppress Jacobinism, brought back by him as America's first French ambassador, and incorporated into the original designs for the Great Seal of the USA. We know that Franklin was an active Freemason, for he wrote about Masonry from the point of view of a Mason himself, and is thus remembered as not only one of the founding luminaries of the American Democratic Republic, but also a free-thinking scientific genius of the Age of Reason. Here we see a modern depiction of Benjamin Franklin in the same coat of Masonic dress as we are already now familiar with from seeing George Washington wearing it. The apron, the jewel, the surrounding symbols of the working tools of craft masonry all appear like the authentic art depicting George Washington in his garb and attire as a Freemason. However, this modern depiction of Benjamin Franklin dressed as a Freemason is a forgery, or rather, is plagiarized from another picture which shows the same layout but a different person at the focal point of the portrait than Franklin. This older and original painting shows not Ben Franklin, but the Marquis Lafayette. It is known Lafayette was a Freemason, along with Franklin and Washington, and we are reminded again of the connection between Lafayette and Washington, formed by Franklin, all of whom were Masons. Lafayette's peculiar pose copied by Washington and Napoleon alike, 